to hello and welcome to today's video. Today I wanted to discuss Loralee Splendor. Loralee Splendor is a Titan exotic helmet that released with the Witch Queen. It originally released in a form that was broken for PvP, though arguably it is still broken for PvP. Its original perk stated that when you became low health, a sunspot spawned at your location. There was no cost to this, you simply spawned a sunspot at your location when you became low health. In PvE, when I originally saw this, I found that to be simply just okay. You don't really want to be low health, and there's nothing a sunspot is going to save you from when you are low health. Because if you are out in the open and you become low health, a sunspot is not going to magically save you, even if that sunspot heals you. However, a couple weeks ago, mid-March, the helmet was reworked. About the second week of the DLC, about the third week of the DLC, the helmet was reworked. And it was reworked so that the perk now states that when you are low health and have full class ability energy, you spawn a sunspot at your location. Or when you pop your class ability, a sunspot spawns at your location. This is significantly better and this helmet plus sunbreaker is currently one of the most slept on builds in the game. This build is incredibly strong and if I were to play with a player in a GM level content or a master level content and this is the build they walked in with, I would have zero complaints, especially if they understood how to play it. I hope everyone enjoys the build, and now let's hop into it. Alright, let's get started on this build. Alright, so first up, we are on Sunbreaker, we are on Bottom Tree. I, in PvE, think Thermites are Sunbreaker's currently best grenade. Obviously, in Solar 3.0, I would switch to Solar Grenades. Um, though, between Solars and Thermites, it'll be close. Um, not 100% sure which one I'm going to be mating. Obviously, I'll have to look at cooldown times and things like that and judge from there which one I think is better overall. But Thermites are very close to Solars overall for power. I am running Rally Barricade. There's a couple reasons for this. You're being healed so much with Lure Lee Splendor on that you just want to be able to have the barricade up as often. Your, your goal with this build is just, I need a sunspot now. And now I can chain my sunspots all over the world. That's your goal, and that's why I would highly recommend running Rally Barricade. I tried it for a little bit with Towering Barricade, but I found that a lot of times you're just leaving your barricade with towering, whereas with Rally, you can sit behind the barricade and actually abuse the benefits of the barricade. And Rally has some pretty good benefits. On to the armor. First up, the helmet, the exotic, Lorely Splendor. Um, the exotic perk on this, I know it's brand new, so I'm going to go over the exotic perk. Catarizing Flame. Your sunspots heal you, so when you stand in a sunspot, you get very close to the Elemental Well mod, uh, Well of Life. It's a little more than Well of Life, um, because you can actually feel yourself being healed. It's no healing rift, but it's not bad healing. It's pretty good healing. When you are critically wounded with full class ability, or when you cast your barricade, you will create a sunspot at your location. This is not what it originally did, but I personally feel it is a buff. Um, what it originally did, I felt was cool. I felt was a Solar 3.0 exotic. This is now a Solar 2.0 exotic. This exotic is so strong on top of Sunbreaker that it feels as good as Void 3.0 does. Base, without Heart of Inmost Light, I can't wait to see what this feels like in Solar 3.0. On the helmet, the helmet's on Solar. We're going to be getting a lot of grenade kills. This is a super long cooldown super. It's a great super in, like, in everything. Like, Bottom Tree Hammer is a great super. Um, but it's a super long cooldown super because it's such a great super. So I highly recommend Ashes to Assets. I do recommend a Solar Primary this build. Um, you don't have to run a Solar Primary, but you might as well. I run Sunshot because it's fun and more explosions is cool. Um, so I'm running Harmonic Siphon, so I get orbs of power on triples and stuff like that with my weapon, which is going to happen all the time if I'm running Sunshot. And I'm running Bountiful Wells. This will give me a total of three solar wells every time my grenade gets a kill, which is, well, every, like, five or, 
it's like every four grenade kills technically, I get three solar optiles, which is a lot and gives you like 50% of your grenade back on top of a grenade kickstart. So you're like 75% grenade after throwing your grenade, which is crazy on top of the ability regen that Sunspots gives you. On to, onto the gloves. The gloves are on stasis. Uh, main range of this is just the kickstarts that are on stasis gloves, I think, are so strong there's not a reason to not run them. Um, this build is strong enough. I ran it last week in um, Master Valve of the Disciple. Not Master Valve of the Disciple, sorry. Uh, Master Birthplace of the Vial. Um, and it felt very good in there. It felt competitive. I ran Unstop Hand Cannon, and I felt just fine. So if you wanted to run Unstop Hand Cannon, um, if you're in Master content and you're on level with it, you could run Unstop Solar Melee, and you can run Overload Auto or SMG, um, and then you'll have both for that strike. Obviously, in other strikes, you could put on Legendary Primary and run Unstop Pink Cannon or Pulse, and then run Barrier in your other spot. On to the chest piece. Chest piece is on Void, fitting with the theme of the rest of my armor this season. Thermoshock plating is just way too strong and makes it so that Arc and Solar chest pieces just don't exist this season. And so I highly recommend a Void chest piece in all of your builds this season. Take advantage of Thermoshock plating. It's really good. Running Well of Tenacity, we have a Reaping Wellmaker on this build. This will give you a little bit of damage resistance. Not a little bit. It's 50% damage resistance, which is really strong on top of the healing from, from your sunspots. Unless you're, like, severely under light, it takes a lot to kill you. Um, it's not quite as strong as the Renewal Grass build in the terms of raw survivability. One thing you do need to remember is any kill your sunspot or any solar ability gets is a full health heal. It's not a controlled demolition heal. It's a full health heal as in devour full health heal. So if a thrall pushes you into your sunspot, they're going to die like basically instantly, especially if they push you through your barricade. They're going to die like instantly because they're going to take barricade damage and they're going to die to the sunspot. And that'll full heal you. Um, so that's a full health on top of whatever recovery you're already getting for the regeneration aspect of the exotic perk, right? On to the boots. Boots are switched up today. Crazy. We are on void boots. Crazy. I know. Don't freak out here, channel. Uh, we are on Reaping Wellmaker. Um, this is because where my mods were and how my armor worked out. I needed to put Reaping Wellmaker here. Um, and so I have Reaping Wellmaker here on the boots with a better already. Uh, this is because I needed higher resilience. I highly recommend 8 resilience at this build. Your discipline barely matters. Um, if you can get to 5 or 6 discipline and you can get to 8 resil, you are in good business with this build. And so these boots are the void boots that I have and they're the highest resilience boots. So the boots are on void. Reaping Wellmakers, when I pop my class ability, the next weapon kill I get, I'm going to be doing this all the time. So I have the perk. I have, you know, the elemental wells there all the time for the damage resistance. Top of that, better already. So any orbs I pick up, I immediately get health regen on top of the health regen. I'm already getting being, having Sun Warrior on my screen, which I'll have up a lot of the time. And then I'm running a slug shotgun for my special weapons. So I have shotgun scavenger on. But if you're running, you know, a rocket, you want rocket scav on, or you're running a um, linear fusion and you want linear fusion scavs. All of that is good stuff. On to the class item. This is where I'm going to tell you you want 7 or 8 resilience. Double utility kickstart. If you are playing this build, I highly recommend double utility kickstart. Double utility plus 7 resilience equals lots and lots and lots of barricades. In fact... If you are a flat 7 resilience and you run W2 to kickstart, you are at 9 resilience. 9 resilience is enough resilience 
that you can loop your barricade before it goes away, especially on a rally barricade. Like, it's super easy just to loop it. And so, before your barricade goes away, and before your sunspot goes away, you can pop another barricade to have another sunspot ready to go. So, if you're playing this right, you will never leave a sunspot. And that is an incredible thought. And once we can get a ranged melee with mini hammer, because I'm assuming they're going to keep mini hammer in Soul War 3.0. I mean, it's one of the coolest melees in the game. Um, this build is going to become insane because you're going to be able to go a mile away and pop a sunspot a mile away from you. That'll kill anything over there. So you can push up to that sunspot. It'll, you'll get your melee back if you're quick enough about it. This build in Soul War 3.0 is going to be, if not as good as Void 3.0 is right now. I mean, it, it's going to be as good as Void 3.0 is right now, but it has high chance to be significantly better than Void 3.0 is right now. And that is wild to me. Um, this is part of the reason why I have geared for Hunters. But that is going to be it for the build. Um, a couple notes about the stats. I do recommend between 7 and 8 resilience for this build. You don't need 8. If you can get to 7, I would run 7. Um, because 7 plus 2 utility kickstarts is the same as 8 plus 2 utility kickstarts in terms of barricade loopage. It's a little bit faster, but you don't need it that much quicker in all reality. You just need to be able to have your barricade ready to go on demand when you need it so i would run seven plus two utility kickstarts and then i would run obviously 100 recovery 100 recovery is a must in pretty much all content and then as high as discipline as you can get though don't stress your discipline because with sun warrior and all the solar elemental walls you create your grenade's gonna be up enough i'm running 56 rec discipline and i feel like i'm at like 90 discipline with this build. If this build could get to 80, 100, 100, this build would probably replace my Void 3.0 build because it feels that strong now. I couldn't imagine with perfect stats. But yep, that'll be it for the build. All right, that's going to be it for the video. I do hope everyone has understood how strong this build is. I hope the gameplay is enough to show off the power of this build the maybe future potential people can see with this build this helmet plus this build is one of my favorite in the game once i got the helmet and i started playing around with it this build has basically become my daily driver build this is the build i play when i'm just playing the game and just farming it is super fun and has a super cool gameplay loop and you really feel like you're just lighting the world on fire which is kind of how you're supposed to feel when you're a sunbreaker type that'll be it for today i hope everyone has enjoyed this video if you enjoyed this video please consider leaving a like on this video and subscribing to the channel for more videos like this one the one before it and the many many more to come i'll see everybody on sunday for a brand new video and goodbye